Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought, of course, that I would review this little video that I thought would be very particularly interesting. And this is going to be a video uh, overall by that of Dante's Boxing Nation, as well as the next video that I'm about to review as well, uh, that I found to be very particularly interesting. And this is going to be uh, kind of a topic about that of Ryan Garcia. And of course, for those of you that have paid attention to that, Ryan Garcia, he's been a little bit off the rails as of late, you know, but I just found these two videos very particularly interesting. But of course, now that we're in the month of April, the biggest fight that is going to be occurring is going to be Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. There's been a little bit of drama behind that. And of course, a certain amount of people also are wondering, uh, you know, how Ryan Garcia will be for that fight because, you know, he said a lot of stuff that has made people think that he probably is not super mentally well, including myself. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. And for that fight, I may also try to do live streaming over for that in terms of at least my commentary because that is going to be a bigger fight and could be very particularly interesting. But we'll see where that goes. Anyways, <laughs> I just thought that this was very particularly interesting because Dante, in my personal view at least, he's going to show you the type of person that what he is. Uh, he's a race baiter. He's someone overall that clearly is very racially motivated, loves to play into the victimization mentality. And Dante's boxing nation, in my view, don't get me wrong, and that's not me stating that he doesn't have uh, certain valid points here and there. Uh, you know, even overall about some of the race topics overall that he may talk about. But Dante's boxing nation, the reason why I always like to review his videos and a certain amount of other videos from the LDBC and New Media is because these channels cannot be trusted just as a certain amount of the other racial or quote-unquote racist channels, like many other people would like to claim uh, as well. Dante and Ego and a lot of these other guys, they cannot be trusted because they're they're just way too racially motivated. Meaning that any time that they look at a boxing fight, and especially they take a look at a black American, uh, they're so, uh, once again, they are so uh, convicted with that fighter, just in terms of their racial pride, that it's going to affect their predictions, it's going to affect their analyzations, it's going to affect their pound for pound list, it's going to affect their opinions, uh, you know, it's going to affect any analyzation or any possible piece of information that's going to be coming out of their mouth. Um, and that includes also criticizing certain black fighters overall that may state certain opinions that Dante does not want you putting out there. Uh, and of course, we, we've heard that with Canelo as well. But anyways, I just thought that this was interesting, but let's see what Dante has to say, let's get into it. You know he's a good kid, and 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 we don't we don't need to judge him. You know, once again, uh, Canelo Alvarez is one of the fighters that Dante's boxing nation and these guys that they've been <laughs> they've been trying to tear down Canelo Alvarez for years upon years upon years upon years, and a lot of the times because either a uh, you know people are probably just as biased. Uh, as what Dante is, or what a certain amount of these other LDBC and new media channels are, at least towards certain fighters like Canelo. And don't get it wrong, there's also a lot of people from the old media, you know, hype train that are also biased against black fighters. Don't get it wrong, that happens as well. Uh, but, of course, in this video, we're only talking about Dante and, you know, his channel mainly. Uh, they've been trying to, you know, tear down Canelo Alvarez for a very long time. As you see Canelo right there... Ryan Garcia, I don't really know his exact type, but he's anywhere from, <laughs> he's anywhere probably from about 5'9 to 5'10. He's about two, maybe even three inches taller than Canelo Alvarez right there. Uh, once again, Canelo Alvarez is a dude to where, you know, he's 5'7 with a 71 inch arm reach. And he's been able to win titles from 154 all the way to 175 against guys like Laura, against guys like Golovkin, against guys like Trout. Against guys like Kodo, Kovalev, Saunders, Smith, Plant, you know, uh, Danny Jacobs, uh, Jamel Charlo, you know, those guys. Uh, you know, Canelo Alvarez, once again, for him to have accomplished what he's been able to do, you can't just be a great fighter. You have to be an exemplary fighter. You have to literally be one of the all-time great boxers to ever grace a boxing ring, period. You know, and, and Dante has been trying to spread this bullshit for the longest time. What what the what the LDBC and New Media is, is that basically they're the pro-black American cult version of old media. That's really what they are. Like what like what a lot of the narratives of what old media really tries to say about Mayweather or certain fighters like that, about, you know, how he cherry picked throughout his whole entire career and how he and never fought anybody and he fought everyone and they were old. Those are the same exact narratives that the LDBC and New Media use on Canelo Alvarez. 
And in my view, both of those narratives about both of those fighters are bullshit. It is what it is. I think that Floyd Mayer the Jr. and both Canelo Alvarez are all-time great fighters. But a lot of the times, whenever someone is looked at to be the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter, those are the type of narratives that they usually have to go through. Uh, you know, Now, if we're talking about a fighter, in my personal view, that actually uh, was fighting guys when either A, they weren't at the best or not champions, it could be Terrence McCrawford. Crawford. <laughs> and, and this doesn't get talked about uh, quite often. The only one who's ever really talked about it with the LDBC and the media has been that of Boxing Ego. Uh, you know, and some other LDBC channels because they're so pro PBC. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, Terrence Crawford, when you actually want to talk about him, and in my view, he also is an all time great fighter. But his resume, in my view, at least compared to some other all time greats, it does lack a little bit, at least comparatively. Because when you talk about his wins over Kelbrook and Amir Khan, I, I really don't even count those. Uh, he was able to beat Gamboa, of course. He was able to beat Postal, Sean Porter, although he wasn't a champion at the time, but I still give him credit for that. And, of course, he beat Spence. But outside those four wins of Gamboa, Postal, uh, you know, overall, uh, you know, uh, Sean Porter, Errol Spence, Crawford really never defeated any true eight great names. And I always had a certain amount of people in my comment section, like there was a couple of people in the last comment section. And don't get it wrong, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm always up for uh, respectful disagreements, especially if you have good points. But every point that I make within my videos, it's always usually uh, very logically made with a multitude of points overall to prove it, at least, you know, from my perspective. You know, I always have some people every once in a while on my channel that state, you know, well, I disagree with you that Dante's Boxing Nation and some of these other channels that, you know, they're racially biased overall towards black fighters or that they don't like certain non-black fighters. What's your proof of that? Well, they've been trying to tear down Canelo Alvarez for years. And some people may say, well, yeah, you know what, Canelo Alvarez, he's been caught on PEDs. Uh, you know, there were certain fights that maybe you can argue you didn't take, blah, 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 all sort of stuff. Okay, and you know, you can mention that if you want to, but there's a difference between criticizing certain things and then trying to tear down his whole entire resume. Like Canelo, for example, Canelo <laughs> was able to fight Gennady Golovkin at 36 years old. Uh, you know, of course, a lot of people would say that, you know, oh, he was washed up and all sorts of stuff, which, which really he wasn't. Um, you know, they said that he fought, you know, Danny after he already lost and all sorts of stuff. Right, so then where's the same criticism for Terrence Bud Crawford? for fighting Sean Porter when he wasn't a champion and had already lost three times in his career. Where's that same criticism? Uh, for stating that Canelo beat a cooked, quote-unquote, cooked version of, Ser of Sergey Kovalev, who had already lost uh, by stoppage multiple times, and that's fair, uh, you know, but Sergey at least was a champion at that level of time and had actually beat decent contenders uh, before Canelo Alvarez and kind of, you know, was a little bit revitalized. Uh, when he beat Kel Brook and Amir Khan, they counted those as eight grade level wins. Uh, you know, even though they were already knocked out at that point in time, multiple times in their career, and they and they had no chance of ever being champions again, no chance. You know, and then of course there's a multitude of other things as well. At one time they had Deontay Wilder within their top four pound for pound. Then Tyson Fury eventually beats Wilder, beats White, and of course had the winner over Klitschko. He's not even within their top ten pound for pound. Uh, when it comes down to it, very peculiar. Uh, you know, when it comes down to it, uh, no, oh, yeah, in a way, you know, getting fighter of the year last year, even though he beat a guy that was on their top 10 pound for pound list. And then on top of that, won the most amount of belts out of any other fighter last year. Uh, you know, I believe was undisputed in two separate weight classes, you know, and then fought nothing but champions, even though the majority of them probably were not a grade other than Fulton. But remember Fulton in their view was a top 10 pound for pound guy. He was special. You know, that's, that's what they stated. So they're bitching and moaning that in a way got fighter of the year. You can argue very clearly that he got fighter of the year. He also probably would have been my vote. Now, if Crawford was your voter uh, for vote for fighter of the year, that's up to you. That's fine. But one has to ask, you know, why, why is Dante's Box Nation and all these channels so pissed? And they say that it's so laughable and disrespectful that in a way gets fighter of the year. Uh, you know, even though he fought more times than Crawford within that 12 month span, fought more champions than Crawford within that 12 month span. Uh, you know, overall, uh, it was undisputed in more weight classes within that 12-month span. Uh, you know, and on top of that, beat a guy that they all claim to be top 10 pound per pound. He wasn't on my top 10 pound per pound list personally, but in their view, top 10 pound per pound. You know, so so how come uh, it's a complete robbery when in a way, uh, you know, overall gets fighter of the year? Oh, but, but let, let's not forget, Devin Haney, uh, overall, he was a candidate and there was no bitching and complaining about Devin Haney being a candidate, you know, isn't that interesting?
is a good kid and 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 this is the moment when you when you need to support your 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 friends and and i know we have a lot of issues before but um I'm, I'm, you know i'm I don't care. I I just care about him and 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 we love that kid and we know him all, uh, and he's a good person. Just I think he he needs a good people around him. That's that's all I I I, I want to say. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? You know, the main thing that I really respect about Mexicans is the way they stay on code, their loyalty to each other. You will seldomly ever see them go off code, even if they personally don't like each other. I remember back in the day when Floyd Mayweather was about to fight Victor Ortiz. You know, Dante's Boxing Nation uses that term on code uh, quite often. Um, you know, and Dante's boxing nation, you know, once again, I can understand certain, uh, things overall that he's stating, uh, or at least overall the idea that he's trying to get at. But what Dante's boxing nation really wants you to do is, is almost like that, <laughs> that toxic ideal of when someone is in a toxic relationship and the woman is always starting shit and they say, you know, oh, well, you know, uh, I'll stand by her side in public and then correct her in private. You know, because she's always starting some shit. That's basically what Dante's Boxing Nation wants you to do. Dante's Boxing Nation, especially if you're a black viewer, uh, you know, or overall if you're a minority watcher, uh, that's basically what he wants from you. He wants you to quote unquote stay on code to have that hive mind mentality. And he wants a certain amount of the other podcasters to have that as well and the other black fighters. And that's why certain black fighters like Shakur Stevenson, they eventually get pissed off at his ass because, you know, they criticize you. Or they will criticize you when you state something uh, overall that they don't agree with or that they don't want out there. Once again, Dante's Boxing Nation is a complete politician. That's all he is. Uh, he's a person, once again, that is just as racially motivated and just as racist as any of these other old media members or any of these other guys. If not even worse. Alright? It is what it is. And the reason why Dante's Boxing Nation is worse is because he's trying to compete with the power uh, of that of old media. And it's great that... You know, Dante, of course, has a great, uh, you know, a little following here. Uh, but once again, Dante's Boxing Nation, a lot of the stuff that he really loves to do is uh, prey, once again, on that victimization mentality. And don't get me wrong, some of the stuff that I think that he says is somewhat relevant. But when he when he states that he wants you to be on code, what Dante's Boxing Nation really wants from you, especially if you're a black boxing fan or a black viewer, uh, is basically overall for you to agree with the majority of what they have to state or overall basically agree with any bullshit that they claim overall to be the truth. You know, like when they state uh, shit about Canelo Alvarez, Tyson Fury, stuff like that, they need you to agree with that type of stuff because if you claim that those guys are top-level pound-for-pound fighters, you know, then they all of a sudden have to deal with certain guys claiming that those guys are top pound-for-pound pound fighters and they, can, they can't be dealing with that within overall their own community, within overall that of their own, you know, little following. They can't have that. So Dante's Boxing Nation isn't just a guy, uh, once again, that says that, oh, we need to be more loyal to each other and we need to only worry about us just like what these other demographics are, which I think that that's something that's very relevant, uh, you know. Of course, people tend to stick more with their own. Uh, what Dante's Boxing Nation really wants you to do is that he wants you to stay on code no matter what, no matter what it is, no matter what bullshit ideology that he puts out there, you know. And what that means, once again, is that you can't really trust these guys because it's always going to be affected, their ideologies and their objective, it's always going to be affected uh, in their commentary. Well, at that time, Victor Ortiz and Brandon Rios, they were beefing. They didn't like each other at all because of this. And that's why Dante's Boxing Nation, every single time that Javante Tank Davis, Devin Haney, when they claimed that Canelo uh, was number one pound for pound, what did Dante's Boxing Nation say? He said that, oh, they, you know, they're just afraid of the racists and all that stuff, which was bullshit, uh, you know. But Dante has to try to sit here and allege that to make it look like Canelo, once again, is more for complexion for the protection or at least completely hyped up and no substance. Um, you know, that's what Dante's Boxing Nation basically has to try to, you know, sit here and make you guys believe. Um, you know, and then Shakur Stevenson, of course, said the Tyson Fury comment, you know, on the Muhammad Ali thing. And, of course, he attacked Shakur Stevenson. And that's why Shakur Stevenson, 
went right back and attacked Dante's box of nation and he got on Shakur's bad side. Because Shakur's seen right through his bullshit. It is what it is. He knows what Dante is about. Uh, basically, once again, what Dante is about, you know, he's a lot like these, uh, you know, guys in America to where if you don't state overall, but they want to state, you know, these super, uh, you know, liberal uh, overall, you know, people that if you don't state what they want you to state, they're going to attack you and they're going to make you look really bad. That's what Dante's vaccination is. He's not a logical nor an objective commentator. Never has been. Floyd Mayweather, he wanted to have Brandon Rios walk him to the ring when he was fighting against Victor Ortiz. But Brandon Rios, he declined the offer. Brandon Rios was basically telling Floyd, listen, we might not like each other, but at the end of the day, we're still Mexican. There was a time when Javante Tank Davis, he wanted Canelo Alvarez to walk him to the ring because he was going to fight against a Mexican opponent. I forget which Mexican opponent it was, but Canelo Alvarez, just like Brandon Rios, he declined the offer. He was basically telling Javante, I don't care how much you praise me and tell the world how much you love me. That's where we draw the line, amigo. If black Americans had that level of loyalty, man, it would take Team USA to a whole nother level. So even though Canelo Alvarez knows... Right, and I somewhat agree with that statement overall to where if you want to state that black fighters or black commentators, that maybe they should stick more to their own uh, and be more within that of an inner circle. I don't think that there's anything overall wrong with that when it comes down to it. And, you know, Dante, of course, is his own person. He can do whatever he wants to. But at the end of the day, once again, the reason why I like to review his videos is because Dante is just not about that ideology. What Dante is about, uh, once again, is that whatever bullshit we spread or anything that we have to say overall the truth, uh, you have to agree with. And if you don't agree with that, then we're going to attack you. Uh, you know, that's why once again, every time that Canelo or Fury or, you know, some of these other fighters, if they're ever in the conversation, a number one pound for pound, especially if a black fighter puts that information out there, all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, they have, you know, white supremacy ties or, you know, something like that, or, you know, they're afraid of the racists and they're just trying to appease to the racists. All those are bullshit. Even if that fighter, uh, has clear results to debate that they're the, you know, possible number one pound for pound fighter. So once again, you can't trust Dante as far as you can see him because he's he's always going to let that affect his agenda. His agenda, once again, is not to be objective or logical. It's overall, once again, to spread his bullshit. That's all it is. Anyway. There's a very good chance that Ryan Garcia is going to lose to Devin Haney. Once again, he is going to stay loyal. At the end of the day, this is still going to be a very exciting watch between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia because with Ryan Garcia's speed and power... That always makes him dangerous in a fight. He has a great check hook. He has a good jab. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how Devin Haney is going to adjust to that. With that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. But I guess that's pretty much about it overall for this part of the video. Let's go on uh, to the next one. Okay, so in the second part of this video... Uh, we're going to be talking about, once again, uh, Ryan Garcia and one of his most recent comments. Uh, recently, this is going to be about the uh, George uh, about the George Floyd case, which, of course, was a clear sign of police brutality, in my view. Um, but Ryan Garcia, uh, he's going to be talking about it. Uh, and, of course, Ryan Garcia has been off the rails. But watch how Dante's box the nation. Watch how he's going to try to use this, uh, once again, to push his bullshit propaganda uh, you know, overall, once again, I'm trying to stay on code uh, somewhat and, of course, trying to allege certain things about Ryan Garcia, you know, and his family. And let me tell you what, Ryan Garcia and his family, they could potentially be racist behind the scenes. I don't know them. But to me, in my view, there's just not enough evidence to clearly, uh, you know, coherently overall state that, you know, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, let's see what Dante's vaccination has to say. At the end of the day, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not anti-black and nor will I ever be. I'm, I, I'm with God. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Why is it whenever you hear someone who's not black say something like, I'm not racist, I'm not anti-black, 
Why is it in that same context they usually say something that is extremely racially offensive to black people? Since the buildup of this fight with Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, Ryan has been revealing a lot about himself. He recently came out talking about the death of George Floyd after Derek Chauvin has already... What Ryan Garcia really has been revealing about himself is that he's going through some sort of mental breakdown at the moment for whatever reason. Um, you know, but it's just very particularly interesting because Aki TV, Dante's Boxing Nation, Boxing Ego, you know, they love posting about this, someone making fun of Ryan Garcia or at least overall... Uh, having no problem uh, in commenting overall about what he's recently stating, uh, not showing really as much sympathy. Uh, you know, it's not always very interesting, once again, that Dante, he always shows a great amount of sympathy for Deontay Wilder, you know, or some of his favorite fighters, Javante Tank Davis, when they're possibly going through something. And they always say overall that, you know, oh, you know, people don't show our fighters mercy and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, to a certain degree, that can be true. Dante doesn't show any of these fighters <laughs> any mercy either. And that's why in a certain amount of these guys, especially on the channels, uh, when they don't show certain fighters like Deontay Wilder Mercy, you can't really cry victim because that, at least Dante can't because, you know, overall, once again, Dante is a dude that does the same exact shit. Already pled guilty and he's already been convicted of murder. Ryan Garcia, for some reason, comes out and says, I don't know if the cop killed him with the knee or not. Now, I'm going to play the clip for you. Right. But let's be real here. Dante's box nation. Ryan Garcia has been off the rails anyway. Ryan Garcia has been talking about the Illuminati. He's been talking about aliens. <laughs> like, like you know, Dante is once again going to try to use this, you know, to his advantage. Uh, overall, you know, to spread, you know, whatever bullshit he needs to later on down the line so he can say, see, uh, overall, you know, this is what we need to start doing. You know, we need to start being on code, you know, when it comes down to it. Because look and see, how you know, how they truly feel about us. And, and listen, you know, a lot of guys out there, you know, they don't feel very positively, of course, about the black demographic or that of black athletes. All that's understandable. But Dante's box nation once again. This 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 dude is like, you know, this dude uh, is a professional race baiter, and he's gonna try to use whatever narrative that he can uh, overall to try and promote his bullshit. That's exactly what he said. But the reason this ties into Fifty Cent because Ryan Garcia just recently said that he wants Fifty Cent to walk into the ring against Devin Haney when he fights Devin Haney on April the twentieth. But Fifty Cent was one of the many celebrities that was demanding justice for George Floyd, saying they better charge Derek Chauvin for murder. So if Fifty Cent is saying they better charge the cop, how do you think Fifty Cent feels about what Ryan Garcia just said? But not just 50 Cent. You had people across the globe that were protesting for justice for George Floyd. And here someone is living in America saying he doesn't know if George Floyd deserved justice or not. Hearing George tell... That's not really what Ryan Garcia stated. <laughs> That's not what Ryan Garcia stated. What Ryan Garcia stated is that he doesn't know whether the cop overall killed that of George Floyd. So basically what he was stating is that he believes that apparently that it was a fixed act. And that apparently that George Floyd may have been in on it. And that who knows, potentially he's still alive. Who the fuck knows with some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Now, I believe more than likely that he was killed uh, as well. But, you know, when it comes down to the overall, once again, Ryan Garcia has been off the rails sitting all sorts of shit. You know, but, you know, he's been commenting shit about aliens. He's been commenting shit about the Illuminati. And then, of course, none of this strikes a chord overall with Dante. You know, he doesn't say certain things about Ryan you know, a lot of these guys don't say things about Ryan. You know, to be fair, I guess Boxing Ego did somewhat, you know, where he stated that, you know, Ryan should probably be a little bit more quiet because he believes it's going to hurt the fight. I agree, uh, you know, at least to a certain degree. But isn't it interesting? Dante and Aki TV, they have no problem, you know, just kind of uh, commenting on, you know, basically Ryan Garcia's <laughs> mental illness, at least at the moment, or at least, you know, his mental breakdown. And then as soon as, you know, when it comes to something that, you know, all of a sudden they don't like, they basically try, uh, you know, to race bait it, you know, as if Ryan Garcia, once again, has been commenting on a bunch of other shit. Uh, overall, that could be looked at as uh, <laughs> as as completely off the wall as well. Oh, the cops, sir, I can't breathe. And Ryan Garcia says, I don't know if he died from the actual cop putting his knee on his neck. But see, this is the thing. Even if you really didn't know, why wouldn't you at least say it was wrong for the cop to put his knee on his neck when the man couldn't breathe in the first place? Clearly, you know something because you're using the talking points that people use to defend the cop, which are usually racist people. Now, with all the thousands of black celebrities that fight against racial inequities, Ryan, he doesn't support or endorse any of them. 
but he supports the one black person that's against all of those racial inequities. Or I should say the two black people. And that's Candace Owens and Kanye West. Candace Owens is a black white supremacist. Now, of course, we all know a couple weeks ago at the press conference, Ryan Garcia's father... You know, a lot of the pro-blacks here in America especially are against that of Kanye West. To be fair, I don't really know a whole lot about Candace Owens. Kanye West especially lost a lot of people, uh, you know, when he was voting for Trump and all that other shit. You know, as as if, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton or any of these other, uh, you know, uh, bugged out politicians behind the scenes. You know, there's, there's so many things overall that you can read up with these politicians like like a lot of <laughs> like a lot of these people, man. You know, they state overall that, you know, oh, you know, how could you elect Trump in the office? You know, that's some racist that shit. Dude, do you know what a lot of these presidents and a lot of these politicians are up to behind the scenes? Like, <laughs> like these guys are evil, evil people, man. Like, like that's why, that's why, you know, on that Epstein Island case, like, you know, people only bring up Trump on that. The, the Clintons were caught on that island. I believe Barack Obama was potentially caught on that island. A multitude of other people were caught on that island. You know, like like these these guys are up to shit that <laughs> that you wouldn't even truly believe. You know, it is what it is. But anyways, you know, once again, but but I just found it very particularly interesting. Dante, of course, knowing damn well that Ryan Garcia, that he's uh <laughs> that he's overall pretty much off the rails talking about a multitude of conspiracy theories, and now he's bringing up about how he believes that possibly or he doesn't know whether George Floyd or not died or not, and he stated that you know he doesn't know uh, overall, you know, so he's not gonna comment about it. And Dante is going to try to, you know, uh, switch this into a complete racist thing. Like, come on. He came out and he called Bill Haney a nappy-headed mf -er, which he was retaliating. Right. Uh, overall, after Bill Haney said something about the toupee. You know, so at the end of the day, if you don't want said anything stated, stated about your hair, uh, overall, then shut the hell up. It is what it is. Getting from Bill Haney talking about his toupee. But obviously, Bill Haney wasn't talking about his race. He was talking about him personally. And we've seen the way Devin Haney reacted to what his father said. I think when Ryan's... Right, but this is also a problem, once again, with a lot <laughs> with a lot of the minorities, and let's be real, especially overall that of a lot of the pro-black demographic overall within that of America. You know, they love to use this, you know, victimization mentality where basically they can state, uh, you know, anything they want against other people, and then overall once someone says something about them, then all of a sudden, all, the, all, all of a sudden you're going too far. You know, that that's not how it works. At the end of the day, if you state something towards somebody, then you have to prepare sometimes for something to come back at you. You know, of course, depending on the type of rapport, you know, but once again, you can't, you can't try to piss someone off and then someone says, you know, something that, you know, you didn't want to be said and then all of a sudden you try to play victim. That's not how it works. Father said that a lot of people were thinking or asking themselves, if this man is bold enough to say something like this on camera, on a microphone, in front of the whole boxing world, imagine what he says about black people when there are no cameras around. So you got Ryan Garcia. Well, let's imagine what you said about some of the other demographics behind the scenes, Don Diggers. You're not going to sit here and tell me that you're just all peachy and fine over behind the scenes, not talking about, <laughs> not talking about some of these other demographics. You think Dante's boxing nation overall doesn't state any certain things? Overall, about some of these other demographics, you know, you're damn mistaken about that. See a junior who's basically saying he doesn't know if uh, George Floyd deserved justice or not, and you got his father. Right, but once again, that's not what Ryan Garcia stated. What Ryan Garcia stated is that he doesn't know overall work basically whether it was a fixed event or not. <laughs> this dude, once again, is such a scumbag. Oh, they're talking about black people's hair. Once again, we can only imagine the type of conversations they have. And once again, I'm not saying that Ryan Garcia should be commenting on it anyway, but at the end of the day, it's like, dude, <laughs> like Ryan Garcia has been talking all sorts of crazy shit within the past couple of months. Like, this is the main thing, Orville, that you're really harping on out of all things. And Ryan Garcia had stated even himself that, you know, he's not educated on the matter and that he's not even going to talk about it. And Dante, once again, being the bullshitter, uh, overall that he is he's going to try to turn this into a complete racist issue like get the hell out of here behind closed doors in front of their family and friends etc etc with that being said i'm gonna leave you guys with this clip of what ryan garcia said that's all i got for now guys i'm on to the next one i don't know if he really did die by the knee or he didn't i, I had no well, clue well, can we can we can we well i think we 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 need to be a little honest here 
Cause, uh, oh, oh. But I guess that's pretty much about it uh, overall for that video. I just thought that that was very particularly interesting. But Dan Dante did a great job once again race baiting as he usually does uh, overall. Uh, trying to create something out of nothing. But you know it is what it is. That's what he's about. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.